Hi, this is Chris Jobling, and this is a pre-class uh, presentation for transformative time responses of state space models. Uh, this will be on Friday, the 19th of March, when I'll deliver the actual class. So in this, uh, in this session, what I want to cover is uh, the following. I want to talk about transforms, time responses for state space models. So I'm going to be looking at the Laplace transform of the state space model, how we convert from state space into transfer function format. We'll then use that format to discuss the time response for state space models. We'll develop an idea called the um, resolvent matrix and the uh, transition matrix. And we will see how these things can be used to solve problems using the state space model uh, and the transfer function model together. We'll go for a detailed example of this in the class. Um, so we'll, we'll show on the board step by step how we can apply the, these ideas to a problem. And then there's some additional problems in the, in the notes for, for homework. So we'll start off by looking at uh, how the um, state vectors and things would relate to the transfer functions. And quite simply, um, if we have a uh, If we have a, uh, a vector of functions of time, then um, if we take the transform of those, it's simply going to be simply going to be equal to uh, the Laplace transform of the vector, which is is given by this. Um, so it's just simple L v you want to of t will be will just con correspond straight to a v v1 of t v1 of s so quite straightforward uh, vectors become vectors um, by laplace transform so it works equally well in both um, viewpoints so if we uh, take an example of a vector this one contains uh, three different uh, different uh, functions of time, we've got the uh, unit step, we've got a, a decaying exponential, exponential and we've got a sine function. Um, these are all functions of time. If we take the Laplace transform of each of those functions of time, in, in the equivalent vector would be uh, 1 over s for the input, 1 over s plus a plus for the exponential, and b over s squared plus b squared for the um, sine, sine function. So a vector of functions of time becomes a vector of functions of s by applying the Laplace transform. So if we uh, look at how we then how this would apply then to state space systems, um, what we have here is a state space model. Um, we've got dx by dt is ax plus bu y equals cx by d plus du. And just applying the Laplace transform, uh, uh, since a, b, c, d are all constant matrices, um, it's sim this is simply s times x of s, which is the uh, Laplace transform differential, minus the initial conditions uh, as a vector, is equal to a times xs plus b times u of s. So it's very straightforward, and similarly y is simply a x c x plus d u. And so we can always take a transfer function and just convert it into into the Laplace transforms using that uh, those techniques. So if we um, take an example, uh, this is the circuit example from last week. I won't. I won't say too much about this, but uh, this is the initial system. We've got input voltage and current. These are the initial conditions of those two values. This is other circuit components, capacitor, inductor, resistor. Uh, and this is how they, they were combined. And we, for, for argument in the last lecture, we used all the inputs, all the possible outputs from the system. So we've got the uh, voltage across the capacitor, the current flowing through the inductor, 
I think this is a voltage across the inductor, uh, voltage across the resistor, and the current flowing through the, the other branch of the circuit. So you can see that these are all the equations of motion, and, and U is this. The D vector here is zero because we don't have any cross direct couplings from the input to the output. So if we apply the Lapras transform to that, we're going to get S X minus X X naught A X plus B U S minus A X plus B U plus X naught. So if we take the um, if we take this term and we simplify it, or we other terms and this is going to be S I minus A times X where I is the identity matrix which is an, an identity matrix is a matrix I'll just draw a picture of it here on the on the slides in this case for one by a two by two system an identity matrix would look like that but generally it would be a matrix with with a diagonal of bonds and zero everywhere else. So we well, put that value into the equation for C. Um, y is, is C times S I minus A to the minus one. The inverse of S I minus A times B U plus C S I minus A times X naught plus D U. And gathering all the terms together we get this term here which represents the uh, zero state response and this term here which represents the zero input response. So these two equations give us together give us the total response of the system. Part of it is due to initial conditions and that depends only on A and C and the rest is depends on U and that depends that depends on C, A, B and D. So we can write down a transfer function for our state space model. Uh, y is this matrix times U. And so from that we can say that the system transfer matrix is C S I minus A to minus one E plus D. And the ith row jth column is going to be the transfer function from the ith input to the jth I ith output, sorry, to the jth input, and there'll be a set of transfer functions for each one of those. And if we've got a single input, single output system, it's just a simple one in element transfer function. That matrix SI minus A to the minus 1 becomes, it turns out to be very important in determining the dynamics of the system. And we call it the resolvent matrix. That can be written, uh, SI minus A to minus 1 can be written as the adjoint SI minus A of the determinant SI minus A. And that gives us a way of, of solving the system. So if we take the example that we had from the circuit, S I A is, is this, S I minus A is going to be S times the diagonal, so S S and then this. Subtract that from that, you get that. So we're going to get this matrix on top of this. This is a determinant, which is the combination S times S plus R L, and then change the signs on the left right hand side, multiply them together. So S, S plus R over L plus 1 over LC is the determinant and that can be expanded out as we show there. And then on the top we've got the adjoint matrix which for a 2 by 2 mean, it simply means that we uh, we take the original, original matrix and we swap the diagonal terms. So these, these are swap, swap places and the off diagonal terms change their sign. So we end up with this matrix on top of this determinant. And of course we can expand that out as we see in the next slide. So if we take the uh, total transfer function, we've got this input vector times this lot times the output vector plus um, this, this term here, the one term which is just direct coupling. So if we do this multiplication first, we take this this row multiplied by this column and we get uh, this result on the top, this result on the second term and then we multiply this by this for each row in, in the system. And so we're going to end up with this, we take out the common factor which is the determinant, so we get this 
this, 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 and this, plus this. And so adding in that D matrix gives the final value. Set of transfer functions. Each one of has the same denominator notice, but different numerator um, for each, each term. And notice this one has an extra term of 1. So for the overall example, then we can say if we're interested in V31, it's going to be this transfer function. If we're interested in V21, it's going to be this transfer function. Um, to do this in, uh, in MATLAB, we simply take a transfer a cir circuit system, a state space model of the circuit system, we find the ABCD matrices, um, and then just form the transfer function by applying that to the transfer function operator. And that returns a vector of transfer functions in this particular case. And I can probably demonstrate that in class if you're interested. Um, the characteristics of this equation, the system poles, they're simply given by the denominator, just as they are in for the normal Laplace transform. The denominator is given by the determinant um, when that is equal to naught. So the characteristic equation in state space terms is the determinant of SI minus A equals naught. The zeros are those values for which, if we combine the, the terms, SI minus AX plus BU, CX plus DU, Y, both equal zero when the input is not zero and the states are not zero. So in a non-trivial case. And this is this can be represented as a as a block matrix with SI minus A in the upper left, um, B in the upper right, C in the lower left, and D in the lower right. And of course the, the dimensions of the matrices uh, should should match on each of these. And then we multiply this by x u, and that should be equal to zero zero. So it's, it's very similar to the determinant equation. So in other words, the determinant of this block matrix gives us the zeros of the transfer function. So we can uh, write rewrite the transfer function as the determinant of this block matrix divided by the determinant of SI minus A and that gives us the total transfer function for the system. To find polar zeros in MATLAB we simply use ZPK on the, on the uh, transfer function matrix. Um, an important consequence of all this is that the state transition matrix the SI minus A term to the minus 1 which we call phi is very important when it comes to determining the, the transient response of a system. Um, it's given, it basically, it tells us the poles and the zeros of the system, and so it, it governs the transient performance of the system itself. So this phi of t, which is the inverse Laplace transform of this, is an important function, and it's interesting to know what kind, what kind of structure it has. We can get at this by just taking the characteristic equation. If we assume that we've got a fully populated A matrix with all, all coefficients in place, then SR minus A is going to have this form. It's going to be S minus A11, S minus A22, and so on on the diagonal, and then the negatives of all the other coefficients on the off diagonal in the order that they appear in the A matrix. And this. Uh, the determinant of this will always have this 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 form. So the numerator will have a form like this. It's always going to be one less than the denominator if this is a proper system. And the denominator is going to have this form. And we can always uh, take the that determinant denominant the characteristic polynomial in other words. We can always factorize that into s minus p, s minus p two, and so on. And these will be known as the characteristic values, um, or eigenvalues, when it turns out to, they turn out to be the eigenvalues of the matrix A, as we'll see in a later lecture. And of course, they're also, because the, the, the denominator of the transfer function, they're also the poles of the original system as well. So um, the eigenvalues of the A matrix turn out to be the poles of the, of the closure of the system when we, when we put them together. And we can always expand this 
format. So the response phi for any given input output co combination is going to be a set of terms like this um, in, in partial fraction expanded form, some residue of s plus p minus p1 and residue of s minus and so on. Um, so these are all going to have this this sort of form e to the minus e to the pt type of structure. So the output response is always going to be a linear combination of exponential terms where the exponential value is equal to the pole or the eigenvalue of the A matrix. So this is always going to be the format. It's always going to be a sort of sum of exponential terms. You know, of course, there might be some complex ones and some repeated ones, but in general, this is the, the form. So this this sort of gives the transient response of the system. It's called a state transition function. Fine, it turns out if, if nothing else was changed, how the system would respond to the uh, initial conditions on the inputs. And it turns out that this matrix, this this transition matrix, is n by n as well, same size as the A matrix. Each element is going to be a, a linear combination of those mode functions we call them, or simply modes, e to the p1 t, p2 t, and so on. And since each one of these modes is constructed from the eigenvalues of p1, p2, pn, or the system of the of the zeros, um, then there's a direct relationship between the characteristic of the system response and the poles of the system, which of course we already knew because we call it the closed loop characteristic equation, for example, in closed loop systems. Uh, and it's also worth noting that the eigenvalues of the A matrix are none of the poles of the system when we're looking at uh, state space models. So if we want to consider the response of the, whole, the overall response of the system just to the inputs, then we would we would use these equations. The, the response of the, the transform of the response of the state matrix is given by S R minus A to the minus one times X of naught or phi of S times X of naught equivalently. And therefore if we want to find the response of the output to that, we just simply pre-multiply that thing by the output base matrix C, and it, this will be another linear combination of those modes. Um, if we want the zero state response, we want to consider the response of the system to the uh, inputs only, then we can get at that through these two, these two equations. X of S is the resolvent matrix times B U of S now, where U is the transform of the inputs. And so this, the zero force, zero input or forced response is given by, zero state rather, is given by this uh, equation here, where this of course is the system transfer function matrix. So for the full system response, since the system is, systems are linear, uh, superposition applies, we can just uh, find the full response by adding the uh, zero state and the zero input responses together. And if we put those in matrix forms, then what we we'll get an equation like this. This is this part of it is the system response to the states. This is the response. This plus this gives you the response to the inputs, and this is the direct couple any direct connections between the input and the output that might exist in the model if d is non-zero. So basically that's where I want to stop on the pre-class representation. We've got an equation here that allows us to determine the, the response of any system given its initial conditions and its inputs. Providing those inputs can be transformed using Laplace, then we can get at the full response. And of course to get at the actual time response, all we would need to do is take this full response and then inverse Laplace transform the result. So what I want to do in the... Uh, class is to actually show uh, a detailed example of this. Um, in the notes you can have a pre, you can have a look at it if you if you have the time, um, but we'll, we'll go through that example in class. We'll also, if we have time, show you how we can use MATLAB to solve these equations using a symbolic toolbox and the, uh, and the various built-in transfer function functions. And uh, Hopefully you'll enjoy the, the session when it starts, and I'll see you in the class on Friday. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.